How do? Yeah, another walk and talk back at Strangeways. We'll pan here and we've got Southall Street and Yay! Hey, she's back! <laughs> if you're new to the channel, this is Holly. She used to work here at Strangeways. Tower. Yeah, she was for her sins of prison governor. When did you start here, love? Um, two thousand twelve. Two twelve. So I was already on health care then. Yes. Uh, when did you leave here? Two thousand sixteen. So I did four oh. four years. Four years. So um, when did you leave in two sixteen? When? Yeah. What month? Yeah, about ish. Um, probably around summertime. Okay, so. Just before I got finished by the governor, yes, yeah? Yes, it was, definitely. Did you have a good time here? Yes, I loved it. Was it the job or the people? Um, more the people, I'd say. It always is the people okay. that you work with. Um, the people that you rely on, the people that have your back. And there's a strong sense of loyalty at Manchester. Liverpool is the same, but there's, you know, a real sense of it's a local prison. You know, people, it was very professional. You know, I felt so coming from jails that were in absolute ruins. I felt the staff were professional, they took pride in the jail, and like I say, staff like you always have my back. So that's me, always got a back. Yeah, <laughs> so, I'm dead tiny. So that, <laughs> that's very up what Ollie's just said. Yeah, people coming here, you've been to other jails that are shitholes and dangerous and chaotic with poor staff and inexperience and maybe a poor governor because a good governor can make a jail can't yeah, it? Yeah, absolutely. You saw a few governors come and go here, didn't you? <laughs> yeah? Yeah. Uh, one or two of them were merchant bankers. Yes. <laughs> merchant banker, you know what I'm saying? And it can affect morale and morale of the jail can't yeah. it? I mean, I, I started there. I mean, I came specifically to Manchester to work with one number one governor. Was it still Richard Vince then? We can mention his name. Yeah. See, see, good governors, I like Dickie Vince, me. Um, what I was impressed with is when I came for like my walk around yep. to decide whether I wanted to like apply for the job, he took me around personally. Yep. And one of the things that I noticed was everywhere we went, he was like opening gates to me and things like that. And I yep. was like, wow, this is like the number one governor opening gates so, to some, me. some number one governors are up the self, aren't they? Yeah. They expect to be escorted and... Yeah. You know, hands behind the back like King Charles yeah. or something like that. I mean, he did have a PO with him, but yeah. that was more for sort of filling in the gaps, yep. you know, of knowledge or whatever. And the thing that impressed me was he would say, go on to the healthcare, go on to the segregation unit. He knew if a member of the staff had a baby or if there was like issues at home, he knew his staff and he knew people's names, you know, first names, not just a number. Dickie Vince, one of a few governors I worked under, who would come in Christmas Day, visit every area, speak to the prisoners he saw, and wish all the staff a happy Christmas. Yeah. That, he was the main, re I mean, I'd always wanted to work at Manchester anyway. Strange ways. Strange ways, sorry. I've still got my professional Go on. head on. Um, but he was like a very significant factor in wanting to work from him and learn from someone who I felt was at the top of his game. And you look where he is now in terms of the prison service. You know, he's he's way, way, way up there, and as he deserves to be. I also work with his wife as well, and you know. As I said, so the thing about Dickie Vince, uh, businessman, mm -hmm. yeah, and he knew the staff. Yeah. And if he come on healthcare and said to me, the laundry's a bit dirty could do with a paint i knew next time he were coming it goes as well as looking at concerns of the prisoners on there yeah. who perhaps weren't well and everything else that's going on yeah but yeah it makes a big difference doesn't it massive moving swiftly on right so there we have the the hub i wing an h wing how rude have they got so good? Just just want to ask you a few things. These are what my opinion. Drugs in prison, are yes. they ever gonna stop them? Um <sighs> No, because they've there's always a workaround, isn't there? Whatever whatever measure you put in place. 
<laughs> can hear the shout and I fucking love it. It just yeah. takes me back. Um, Got a bit, of, bit of chit chat going on here. Yeah. Can't. Go on. <laughs> Carry on. Um, so, whatever you come up with. Oh, hello. Whatever you come up with as a solution, like, so mobile phone blockers, stuff yep. like that, stop the flow of drugs. Yep. Um, boss chairs, anything, because it, it all basically involves... Tell them what a boss chair is, so um, they know. So basically, you sit on this big block, and it sort of can detect stuff up your ass. basically. <laughs> it can detect mobile phones that have been shoved yeah, up your ass. I thought you might have been a bit more subtle than that, no, but that, that's fine, sorry. that gov. Um, but, the, but the thing is, the, so the drug trade revolves around mobile phones, doesn't it? Of course so, it does. You're never going to stop mobiles coming in, I don't think. Like I said, any measures that you put in place, even if you stick them on the boss chair, yep. and the, so the, the, that's what they call it, the boss chair, I don't know what it stands for. So if you tested positive, so they knew that you had a mobile phone on you. Yeah, this is quite relevant. They'd generally put you down the segregation unit. Yeah, walk they? this way. So they'd wait. They put you, if, if they got one in a dry cell in the seg, so a dry cell, the toilet, if you use the toilet and flush it, it goes basically into a, a tank. Yeah. So if you had a mobile phone and flushed it, they'd know you'd flushed it. Nobody else in, in that cell, they could find that. However, yeah, they may be- ingenious ways of like passing it, it There might be there, two, two dry cells. And here's the thing, if your segregation's full and someone's got a phone up their ass, or five people who've come in that night have got phones up their ass, what are they gonna do with them? They go to a wing, yeah? yeah? And you can bet your life, you know someone's got a phone, you put them in a self at night, you can go in morning and search it, security or whatever, you're not finding that phone, are no. you? It's gone. So drugs, we're not going to stop them. I want to ask you about the methadone programme. What do you think about that? Um, I don't know, it's difficult, right? This, this is quite weird, because like, the pharmacist that I go to to get my medication is a um, methadone dis distributed so I yep. see the other side so I see these guys come in that are really trying to turn their life around they're out in the community they're trying to turn their life around yep. from a physical perspective um, they used to just give them we used to call them this go back years and years like 20 odd years they used to give if you were detoxing um, off heroin they'd give you DF118 yeah, yeah we know about them we've said them yeah so, so DF118 you get a five day detox you do your rattle people hated it didn't do much but a lot of lads I've met, they were either scared to go to prison because they were going to do the rattle, mm. or they were happy to get the rattle out of the way and then... Start afresh and... Yes. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's like I say, I, I did quite a bit of work with the recovery unit here, didn't I? And, and so I've got mixed feelings about it. I think it can be helpful for those that genuinely want to come off it. Yep. And then you're going to just have the ones that just using it as a stopgap. Uh, or a top up. One of the issues is, sorry to interrupt, one of the issues that we well, have. I wasn't speaking. I know you were going <laughs> to. <laughs> I'm just preempting it. Carry on. Um, one of the issues that we have is people would go out on methadone and then use street, this way. street drugs as well. And then that would sort of. God, I don't know like balls. No, you're alright, you're alright. Um, you could have put big, some heels on though. I've got a big forehead, haven't I? But yeah. anyway. So, yeah, they'd still be on the methadone and then they would, like I say, top up with street drugs. And one of the ingenious things that I, I used to hear of, um, they'd put cotton wool, I don't know where they got this cotton wool from, or they'd put something that could absorb liquid in the mouth. So they would take the methadone, yeah. absorb it into whatever was like in the cheek, whether it be cotton wool or tissue or something like that and then take it back and well, out. You know why they were drinking or... water before and after, don't you? Yeah. To dilute it, yeah. so if they did regurgitate. Yeah. It. Yeah, but do you know, could you explain to me why top jail, retinal <laughs> scan, retinal scan, this is to get your methadone, retinal scan, ID card, glass of water, Q, two nurses, one's on the computer, gets your measurement, the other gives it here. You drink it, then you go, officer makes you get another glass of water, and then you go back to yourself. Mm. Bottom jail, Q, no retinal scan, ID card, an officer there if you were lucky, yeah. one nurse hanging it out, that's that, it. Because the plan was, bottom jail was never supposed to have people on methadone, were they? But the, the, the population... A third of, of the jail was on methadone, wasn't it? Yeah, exactly. The population of people using methadone. So the bottom jail was always considered the... 
air quotes, nicer part of the jail and it was scuzzy at the top of the jail. Scuzzy? <laughs> scuzzy. That's, that's when I worked. Yeah, no. <laughs> but it was scuzzy, wasn't it? Yeah, walk um, this way. And like I say, it was the bottom jail was always seemed a bit more settled. Um, but then, yeah, everyone started. And, and I also think that methadone is used to shut them up, basically. Subdue uh, people. Yeah, so they've gone from de-rattle, which was just as bad dealing with people that were detoxing, yeah. up to, um, you know, now it's just trying to keep them quiet and subduing them. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that that's very much... So, I want to ask you something now. Go. Quite controversial. Not for me, it's not. I know a lot of lads who died in there. Yeah. Heroin overdoses. Yeah. Uh, overdoses from all sorts of things. Yeah. On methadone, taking anything else they could get hold of. Yeah. Yeah. They end up dying. Yeah. Why, at coroners, are they not looking at why they died, i.e. an overdose, the more looking at, I always felt, the, blaming the prison what, for... Our procedures and processes and why didn't we stop the drugs and why didn't we do this and yeah. why didn't we do that, yeah. yeah. Um, and as well, just for people's knowledge, even if, if they've been released from prison up to, I think it's seven days or 14 days, it might be, if they died once they'd left, left prison within that time span, it was still classed as a death in custody. Yeah. So we could have sent them out on the correct prescription and everything, or they could be clean yeah. or whatever. So the tolerance to street drugs is going to be less. They could have gone out, used street drugs, overdosed, died, and then we would still get At one point, into... were they not on about upping the doses before they went out so they were more Re able... Retoxing. Retoxing. Fucking yeah. retoxing people. <laughs> Yeah. When they first came out of that, I was like, what the fuck? And then they were talking about now Traxone, which is what you give people um, when they've gone sort of unconscious. You, uh, what's the, is it Reservoir, not Reservoir Dogs, uh, where it gives the... Oh, it's Pulp Fiction. Pulp Fiction. So imagine the scene in Pulp Fiction where they just give it a big old welly. Straight in the, into the heart. Straight into the heart. Um, so naltrexone will do that. I think they gave her adrenaline or whatever, but naltrexone will sort of bring you round. So they were also, towards my end of the time, they're training people how to use the needles and tr stuff like that. And you're thinking, fucking hell, how far do we go? How far do we go? What do, what do we do? Moving swiftly on. Let's go. We'll let you think about that, guys. All right, guys, this, this is a private joke. Okay. How much, love? <laughs> Five pound in a bag of chips. Five pound. Done. Deal. <laughs> right, so uh, I've, I've got some questions I specifically wanted to ask you. Yeah? So as a governor, what, what's the SMT first? Senior management team. Right, so as a governor, when you sat in meetings, yeah. did you get frustrated? <laughs> Absolutely. Right, and did you discuss everything about the business? No, the, the senior management, uh, the SMT, uh, very much had a desire to talk about everything in separate meetings. Okay. So we had finance meetings, we had safety custody meetings, we had all sort of, every sort of area in the prison you can think of we had a meeting for. So the senior management team actual meetings were statistics, performance, stuff like that. But by fuck, every jail loves a meeting. And it, it would be the case that as a governor, I mean I'm quite hands on, I like to be out and about, I don't like to be sat in meetings. No. And that's where I think the real work goes on. You obviously you have to sort of maintain your performance. You've got to know what's going on in your area. But I'm going to put you on the spot now. Yeah, go on. So all the governors you work with, oh. yeah, what percentage would you consider decent governors? 35%. 35%, that's quite specific. <laughs> no. 30 seemed a bit low, 40 seemed a bit high. So, so if I mentioned Governor Ratboy, would you know I was talking about? Yeah. Yeah. So Governor Ratboy who got caught with his pants down, literally, mm -hmm. with... Uh, a member of civilian staff, yeah, everyone knew about it, yeah. 
how and do you? It's not the only governor during my. No, time, it's not. Is, no, yeah. but but how do you think it affects morale of the troops on the shop floor when you know governor's being caught up to no good, gross misconduct, and it gets swept under the carpet? Well, one of the things that's like hammered into you during your training is um, called what's called moral authority, and I think I've sort of sp spoken about moral this. authority. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. So I think I might have spoken about this previously with you, but the moral authority is, you know, how we walk. This are you talking? Walking. Oh, let me set my watch on because I'm getting my steps in. There we go. What? What the fuck? Get your steps in. <laughs> Come on, moral authority, so what is moral it? moral authority is basically, we hold ourselves to a higher standard. So basically, we exhibit and demonstrate the positive behaviours that we want prisoners. So, ma management by example, really. Management by example, yes. yeah? yeah? Engineering, you know, you do, you, you lead the troops, don't you? Yeah. Like Dickie Vince, yeah. ultimate professional. Yeah. Yeah? Say it as it is. Yeah. I mean... Obviously, they had they were sort of the odd renegades like myself who were effing blind and you know sometimes yeah. make decisions that were not always sort of down the party line. Let's say it was you know, um, but basically, I mean, you're thinking, yeah. I mean, I used to work for a governor, brilliant governor. Uh, I'm not going to mention his name because he probably doesn't want it mentioning. Okay. Know what it's like, but he was brilliant. And what he said was, he said, he was called what's a libertarian, it's like live and let live, basically. Okay. He said, what staff do in their own home, in their own time, you know, is their business. Okay. You know, they do when they're, even if there's a crowd of officers on duty, not on duty, sorry, off duty on a night out, yep. you are still representing the prison service because if you get caught, taking drugs or I mean I've done so many investigations yep. of issues that have arisen from staff nights out okay and, and we're talking um there was one that I did at Liverpool um so what what gone, sort of thing did, obviously drunken behavior there was one called the finger buffet night so that was the finger buffet <laughs> do we want to know what that is no you don't want to know what it is at all we do. He does want to know what it is. Oh I want to know what it is. No, seriously. Okay. Um, oh my God, I feel awful saying this. Right. So, if there was anything sexual, yep. right, I always got given it. Didn't matter which prison I worked at. Really sensitive. What What one ask is right. <laughs> why would something be in front of you to be investigated? Yeah. Um, so a night out. Lots of nights out. Listen, when I was at Forest Bank, screws dudes there. Yeah. Uh, always end up in fights, usually yeah. with each other. I, I don't know whether it was such such a stressful job, just got out, everyone partied hard, it was ridiculous, yeah. it was a joke. And I, I, I've done that as well. So and, why you know. why would a night out end up in front of you or anybody else uh, leading with an investigation? Um, well, so it generally happens through whispers coming back to the jail. Okay. So it will start off by, oh, this happened to such and such, and this was done in a public place. Or, on occasion, we'd have, like, um, say they'd gone into, like, a weather spoons or something and misbehaved. Yep. Yep. They'd have a someone from Weatherspoons ring up and say was there a lady you're staffing at the, the weekend acting like dickheads or whatever yeah so it could and you'd say yes 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 and then i'd have to investigate it one investigation that i did here from manchester yeah. is um uh, we were given an anonymous tip off in the post about the activities of a certain officer online and i was given that and that was very difficult very sensitive but like I say, it tended to be sexual impropriety that I I tend to get. So I don't know whether they thought I might have that kind of nature that I can sort of tease things out of people. But so you know. uh, so you, you do an investigation, yeah. but you're just going off what people say, what people are going to tell you, aren't they? You are, yeah. But but the thing is, with me, so. Would it usually be a complaint from the public or something that no, leads to that? No, it would generally be a member of staff that are grasped another member of staff. All right, so let, let's suppose there's a drunken night out and yeah. maybe two members of staff kick the shit out of another member of staff. Yeah. Uh, 
that comes back, would that be something you would investigate? Yes. And the fact they were outside, they were drunk or whatever, no police involvement, you know, it, if it could be proved, would you act on that, you know, dismissal or whatever? Yeah. You see, prison investigations used to frustrate me, being involved in a few, questioned. Because, because it's, not, it, it's it, not like a jury, it's not, it, it's, it's not. balance of probability. So you haven't even got the standard of, you know, it, it, it's literally, well, if enough people say this, yeah. that must have happened. And that's why you have to, so investigations are quite in depth because gather all the paperwork you have to interview staff on the periphery you have to re-interview staff sometimes two three times and that I particularly found with that you get I, I interviewed the, the one member of staff who we got the anonymous note and I think I interviewed her about five six times before I got the truth because you have to go back challenge the person with whatever's been said to you so say someone said oh Sam punched me yeah and I'd go to you did you punch me now then I'd have to come back and say, well, there's another officer that says he did, and another officer. Well, I might have punched him, but I wasn't, you know, I, I don't really know because I had a dream. Do you know, do you, do you understand what I'm saying? So the, the truth will out, but you have to very much. I do. I, final question on this, because I've got loads more questions to okay. ask you, especially when we get around to the front gate and the office box, right? I forgot what I'm going to ask. Not I, it's because you were you were talking too much. Go. No, what was I going to ask? What was I going to ask about investigations, investigations. Sammy? Out Sammy, come on. Outcomes. So, oh yeah, th this is an important question, this. I probably already know the answer. So, in investigations, uh, do you think some people get targeted by staff and sort of, as it were, blacklisted, sent to Coventry, people ignore them, yeah. treat them like shit? Yeah. That, that for me, it's awful, isn't it? Yeah. You can have someone who's done nothing wrong uh, and, yeah, it's and just told the truth. Or they don't like you. Or, told the truth yeah. and everyone turns yeah. their back and treats like or, shit. And every single bit of your behaviour is seen. Like, I've, I've had security reports put in about me because I've gone into a male prisoner's cell and sat on his bed talking to him I'm going to leave it there I'll Let's leave you with that walking. thought dodgy it's dodgy <laughs> reports put in about her <laughs> smile there Gov so how long do you think this place has got just stay stay there a minute Gov so we're very new road now guys I came down here with Keith the other week talking about the shops I didn't know two months ago all the shops down here all the snide shops illegal shops CBD oil drugs prescription drugs Every snide product you can think of, gone, shut. So for me, this place now is going to be next. Waiting patiently, Gov. How long do you think this place has got? Do you, know do you think it's time to shut it and build a new prison, maybe on the circular, and develop Manchester Town Centre a little bit more? Well, that's the issue. It's prime real estate. And even just driving here today, because I came a different way, because I, I, I come into Manchester, like, occasionally, but I haven't come back past the jail for ages, and it's like, over that way is like really developed up, and then over this side, you're starting to go downhill. But they've been talking about shutting Manchester for, for years. Um, it's, I don't know what the current prison population is at. Yeah. Not here, nationally. Because about 90,000. They're on about sending them abroad. You do know that, don't you? Have you seen it? <laughs> yeah. Where? Some fucking dickhead has decided that maybe we could rent prison space abroad. Yeah. This is Governor's reaction. That was my reaction as well. What a joke. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be like, mate, send me to Spain. Walk, walk this way, Gov. So, do you think it's got limited time? Um, no, I don't, personally. You think it's going to stay? Uh, for, for now, yeah. I think it, it's got quite a few good years in it yet. Um, yeah, but it must I mean, cost a hell of a yeah, lot does, to but maintain. Look, but look at the London jails. All the London jails have stayed open. I mean, that is more a population thing. But all the London jails have stayed open, even though that's prime real estate. Right, Gov, I've never asked you. So how long is it since you've been back here? Oh, God. 2016, did I come back after that? Any anxiety? I should have asked you that really Do you before know what? we. I did have a little bit. You seem to be smiling, see, it makes me smile now. I think a lot of funny shit that happened in there. Yeah. 
Yeah. It's a lot of and and basically I've been a miserable twat for months now. So just to come out and just yeah. come out and just have a bit of a laugh. Past, yeah, just to come out past seven o'clock basically is like a bit of a dream for me. Um, so yeah, it brings back um, nice, really nice memories. People yep. like yourself that I met. Who, so like seven years on, you know, we, we've we've been in contact the whole time. Quite a lot of people that I've been in contact with. Yep you know friends from here um and it's just yeah it's walking around and just sort well of while i've got you then let, let's talk about the healthcare, right because obviously i worked on there seven years you had a, a fair bit to do on the healthcare yeah. when you were duty governor yes at the weekends you'd always visit the healthcare, didn't you yes a lot of governors didn't come near it yeah one it, it had an atmosphere it had its own smell which quite often weren't pleasant mm -hmm. um so why did you visit the healthcare? Because you'd always come and have a brew and spend a oh, bit of time there. Of course I would. Why? Um, I mean, some of it had to do with my roles and responsibilities, not only as a duty governor, even though some people didn't, but also as head of state for custody, self-harm, suicide reduction, violence reduction. But I have a genuine interest, like I say, psychology background, genuine interest of people with mental health issues and what we can do to support them. It wasn't a place that ever scared me. I had a lot of admiration for the staff, the, the nurses and the staff that worked on there because it was a challenging place. Yeah, very much. Because governors can walk on and walk off. Yeah. But, you know, and, and how did that... I'll ask you a question now. How did that feel to you when you've got one, either a duty governor that's not visited you or two, one that's just... We're going to move around the corner where there's less off. traffic. Yeah. H hold that thought. It's a great view of the jail. Want to do the old gatehouse as well? Yeah, we? we'll go up to the old gatehouse. You can ask me that question, and I'll ask you a couple more questions, eh? Yeah. Cool. Can I not finish asking it now before I forget? Yeah. Let's get it. Uh... Go on then, go fight away. Yeah. Oh, a bit of Wait, action. Yes. No, it's not going to the jail. Or it might be. Go on then, go. Um, so I just saying to you, as a member of staff. Sort of with your nose to the grind, working with the most difficult, the most difficult, mentally challenged people that are waiting to go to the high security hospital. How would you feel when a governor came on, signed the book, and fucked straight off? Well, I'll be honest, yeah. I, I like working on the healthcare because we, we didn't have no senior officers. Yeah. <laughs> Even though we got cat aid prisons, no senior officers, uh, just the nursing staff. And, and myself and, team, and usually really. one other member of staff you were a real team yeah member. real team effort uh, there were plenty of governors in it like when they come on signed on and fucked off all quite happy right. um you know such as yourself great if you were on and there were one or two others but not many mm. you know sit down and have a good chat some of the oscars would come on and have a good chat bit of toast again not many mm. Uh, I'd always turn up with this food. Yeah, 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 we'll work for food. Yeah. So, me, I, for most of my seven years on there, I liked it because there were no Cause managers, no governors, no fuck there, all. Right? And then when we got senior officers last six months and basically tried to turn it back into a segregation unit, then yeah. no, it weren't the same was, for me. That was always like the difficult thing I felt for you guys working on there, but also for, for me as a governor making decisions, the people that were bouncing to Yeah, but you'd liaise, set. right? So you'd yeah. come on, if you got a difficult prisoner, yeah. you know, what, what do you want to do? As in, talking to me, talking to Bradders, talking to KK yeah. and Sandra, what do you guys want to do? Do you want him left here? How do we manage it, etc., which were great. Or do you want him moved? Yeah, but quite, quite and often. And then I'd have to go and tell the segregation staff and they'd be like, Oh, we're not taking yeah. him, really. yeah. and then yeah. you had to say basically. So me, I used to like it. I just used to like it, just as cells. Felt like I was self-employed. Deal yeah. with yourselves. It was great. We'll go up to the old gatehouse and yeah. ask you a few more questions. Excellent. So sure. So the office blocks there, Gov. Yeah. Yeah. You didn't like spending time up there, did you? No, did I not? Right, let's go to the old gatehouse. Yay. This um, is a listed building, isn't it? The this house. is a listed building, right? So, worst experience. Worst experience at this place, yeah. Governor Rap Boy, that one, or are we talking the other one? 
No, your worst experience. If it's really bad and you don't want to discuss it, that's fine. The, the, the thing is, I'm asking a, a worst experience and maybe a dozen things that qualify. Come on, other side of me. Okay. Because I've got my dodgy eye. <laughs> Fucking hell, fire. <laughs> um, aren't we hampered here? So, so people ask you, you know, yeah. most dangerous prison, most violent, who are you most scared of it? There's loads, isn't there? There's loads of incidents. Mm. So, something that that upset you you know one of them things where you go away and maybe for two weeks it's in your mind it's playing on you you can't sleep I'll tell you what, a lot of things that played on my mind not the things we dealt with mm. how cunty managers were dealing with the situation I, I no I found it was dealing with the aftermath because as a governor you you just expected to get on with it it's like you become a governor and yeah, but weren't we all supposed to just get on with it? Yeah, there was. I'm, do you know how many times how many incidents have been involved in? Right, so you have a hot debrief. So literally, uh, within half an hour of an incident, maybe you might be in a room talking, hot debrief. The idea was you'd come back. Let the adrenaline settle down. Oh, I've got. A f <laughs> And I've got what well, I have got one funny story that I well, have to tell. Well, you you wait. So let me tell you this. So in prison, we had the care team, right? Uh, we. Which is, is what he says, it's a care team, so that staff have volunteered and in after incidents and that, they get in touch with people. Now, some people did it because they were nice people and they cared and some people did it because it looked good on the CV. Yes. So I get an email, yeah? So, from the care team, uh, dear Officer Samworth, yeah? Um, we realise that you have recently been assaulted. Uh, we believe it's quite a bad assault, which w resulted in you visiting hospital uh, and having a week off work, blah, 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 going on, you know. Um, would you like to discuss it with someone? There's people available and all that, yeah. So I'm thinking, email. Fucking assaulted? Fucking assaulted? Yeah. <laughs> 18 months previous. 18 months previous, I was assaulted and the care team's getting in touch with me. How is it? She's just twigged on. <laughs> Fucking 18 months. I'm I thinking... I went a week after. No. No. 18 months. Because I got in touch and he said, prisoner, as soon as he said his name, I know him. Do you know why I know this lad? Because when I was at Forest Bank, private sector, this lad in the seg caught me full on in jaw. Yeah. His name was Downs. And here... On K wing, he's on the wing. I said he should be down the second. He's fucking dangerous. The staff were having a meeting. Yeah. I said to the staff, keep him locked up. Teddy Burt says keep yeah, him remember, locked up two yeah. days. Yeah, I'm walking down landing one day, this day, and I see down to walking towards me. He so, have been it, locked, so he's smiling, he? you know, like one of them insane smiles. I've got one of them. Yeah. yeah. So Bertie Bassett is talking to uh, Nobby Nobbler. Yeah, <laughs> he's walked past me down to you know when your brain ticks. Yeah, I thought. And you know it's coming. Thought, you do. What the fuck is he? Next minute, bang! Yeah. From behind, he got me here and he got me a forest bank. Yeah, but care team, thanks for that. Um, caring is sharing. 18 months after the event, they got in touch with me. By email? What are you fucking laughing? Yeah, by email. <laughs> by, I don't know. I don't know what's going on. By wrong with the, me. the human touch. I've, no, I've just been saying, I've been dead miserable for the last couple of months. I really struggled going into autumn. And you're laughing and smiling And now. I'm laughing and smiling. Yeah. Um, probably because I'm out the house, for starters. Yeah. Right, let's go up to the old gate. I'll let's ask you a question. Old... Come on. <laughs> and we'll stop talking about me. And no, my, no. And my mental health. <laughs> no, no, no. We'll, we'll, so, we'll come back to that. I've got, but you've got to let me tell you the funny story at the end. I will do. We'll, we'll finish it off at the end. Okay. Oh, come here, there's one more thing I want to ask you. Here still. You spent time at Grizzly Risley. How long? Oh God, on and off. Can you walk around Risley? But you might be like tight wellies. Okay. Do you want me to what? do a wrecking with the dog? Yeah, because what I'd like to do, Grizzly Risley, Keith, I might bring Keith with me, kill mm. Keith. He's a XIPP prisoner. He says, Grizzly, Risley. It's another prison for you guys who may not yeah. know. Uh, could we go there, he says, because, you know, 
a lot of shit happened there when I were there. I know you were there, that might be yeah. good, you and Keith yeah. talking about your experiences. Oh God, the women's side was awful. Absolutely. Save awful. it. Right yeah. over here, gatehouse, let's back have the. Back the way, back the way. We just. Oh, I'm not, not saying anything, but. We're just in front of a building that used to be a place of ladies of the night. It looks like they've turned it into fancy uh, apartment blocks brothel. now. But yeah, it was a brothel basically. <laughs> used to Why were you whispering? Because that lady walked out and I didn't want her to think that I was calling her a sex worker. Okay. <laughs> okay. Let's Over go. here. Let's go. Let's have you up against the ballards, as it were. In, in fact, that ties in wonderfully with my story. Okay. The ballards. Do you so let me pass you this because it's a bit windy now. You hold that. Do you remember the old photo? There used to be like the old photos of yep. stuff out here and stuff like that. That door was made for you, weren't it? <laughs> yeah, let's see how. <laughs> Yeah. These were yeah, Victorian yeah, yeah. sized doors. Come on they? then, tell us your story. Right, okay. So there was a very, very well known um, Manchester gang family. A few brothers, spent time with Cat A unit. One in particular was on this segregation unit. And you'll know who it is because he consistently had a group of protesters outside. Right, okay. Do you know who I'm talking I about? I know who you're okay. talking about. So, and a lot of them would wear like black and white striped like garb making out the prisoners and this that and the other so um quite often nothing really we could do the police might come along and try and shoot them away but from a prison perspective there was a lot we could do so to enter into the vehicle area of the prison there are um, bollards that move up and down to let vehicles through correct so we had one this one day and it's great because it turned into quite a major incident so we had the, these like these bollards like this size and this they come up out of the ground they come up out of the ground they'll stop something like 65 ton a yeah. vehicle yeah um and this guy this nutter sorry to i'm not sorry to say that this guy uh, super glued himself to the bollard <laughs> Did he? Did you bring you there? Did you not know about that? No. He was wearing black and white and he had his hat on and he's super and he's shouting out, out to the prison. With the bollards up, obviously. Yeah, the bollards are up. Yeah. So it's all like, I think we were in the command suite or we were, we were somewhere because he's all like, fucking hell, what are we going to do? We can't get vehicles in and out. What if an incident happens? What if we need to get an ambulance know, in? Get an ambulance in, yeah. Um, not really classed as high priority by the police, someone, or really a, a, appreciating from the police the importance of someone glued to a bollard getting into yep. a high security prison. And then um, someone just came up with a genius idea and said, why don't we just put the bollards down and see what happens? <laughs> I think we like started to move them manually. It's like that. We stuck to the bollard and it's like that. Uh. But eventually we thought, no, we are going to do some serious injury here. So we called the police and it, eventually the police came in and basically cut him off. I don't think there was any soup glue remover that they could use. Uh, but yeah, just that. The, the moves and these kids are like 16, 17. But yeah, it's funny. Funny. So, Gov, thanks for the funny story. <laughs> It probably wasn't that funny, but it's no. funny to me when it happens. Yeah, of course it is. <laughs> You're smiling and laughing, which is a good thing. Yeah. Out. It is very pleasant tonight, guys. You uh, know. Can I just say, he's in a short and t-shirt. I've got about 20 layers on. So. Can I ask, have you ever seen me in anything other than shorts and a t-shirt? No, no. So, why are you surprised? Because we were outside. Listen, guys. Thanks. Thanks for coming, Gov. Thank you for having me, as usual. Uh, I think... We're, we might do Risley, we might do a couple more nicks. Do you fancy that? Say, yeah, there's, there's, I'm trying to think um, where else is. Dawn Cross might be quite good. Do you know the comparison of what an open jail is like? Okay. So, na so now we're talking, people like these walk and talk. So uh, thanks for your continued support. Thanks for coming, Gov. Style. Uh, would you like to have. Oh, style. Yeah. Could do style prison. Oh, wow. Yeah, we're definitely doing that. Would you like to have the last say? Um, yeah, it's just it's been a really good crowd. It's been a good city. I've been having a couple of difficult months, like mental health wise, 
I am on TikTok, uh, BPD under, uh, BPD girl underscore three, and I'm on YouTube, Holly D. I think it's eight eight. I'll put the links in the description. Yeah. You'll have to send them, mate. Yeah, but it's just if you're interested in mental health, which you probably are if you're if you're watching this channel. But if you're interested in mental health, um, I do go into depth about my own mental health and struggles and what I do to sort of deal with it. Thanks for your continued support. God bless you all. Thanks for coming. I'm going for a kebab now. On that? Oh, I'll sit there. We'll sit there.